Um, it, yeah, I, uh, these fax attacks just come and there's no warning. Um, I'm beginning to realise that, um, you know, I've set up a s small support group of vax damage people mm. and uh, we're beginning to see a pattern now where these vax attacks, you get a day of fatigue, which you might not notice and you carry on. Um, mm. And then in my case, uh, the pains start jabbing in the left eye. As you know, I've been having lots of eye problems, uh, eye droop, facial numbness. Um, and we'd got a lovely mm. hotel booked. It was a family uh, bar mitzvah weekend. My husband's Jewish. Uh, he's a nice Jewish boy. And uh, we had this amazing weekend <laughs> booked. <laughs> and I sat down on the stairs uh, on Friday morning having packed. And he said, you look like, you know, you look awful. And I said, I can't come, you know. And it was just a big deal because I'm a bit of a, um, a live wire and I love a, I love a party uh, pre-AstraZeneca. And have you actually filled in one of these yellow cards and applied for the government, the government's £120,000 and all, all that kind of thing? Or, or are you just on the long list of people who haven't heard back from that? Uh, I filled in the yellow card in around April. I had, I had the jab on March the 5th. Uh, I've been ill ever since from mm. that night, that very night. Um, I now, just is, the, is this March... 2021 or is it March 2021? Yeah, a well, year and a half ago. Okay. So I then... Uh, and you filled in the yellow... I filled in the yellow card and then I also filled in the AstraZeneca form as well. Uh, and that's really frustrating mm. because you just get these uh, ridiculous emails back that are on some really old-fashioned format that uh, you can't even read mm. it on your phone. You have to go up to a computer. Um, and also my GP uh, filled in a form to AstraZeneca uh, stating the long, long list of symptoms, the nerve damage and all the awful symptoms that I've had, life-changing. Um, and she sent it last September the 21st um, and she's only had a, an auto-reply. She's never had a response. I've also phoned AstraZeneca twice, Mark, and uh, they... Each phone call was frustrating and they said different things that, that weren't what they'd said in the first phone call. And on the second phone call, I just put down the phone in tears because it was just so frustrating. They don't care. So your life has... No, no. I don't think there's any doubt. We, as I said, we've been trying to get AstraZeneca a reaction from them to the cases we've been talking about now since last Thursday. They haven't replied. They don't want to put anybody on the show. Are you a bit disturbed by the media coverage? I mean, I don't wish to knock your employer, but I was listening to the BBC earlier today. And in fact, if you if you listen to the BBC, it's basically like it's still March 2020 there's no the story hasn't moved on there's no idea that you know it isn't uh, the story is the covid's a threat and the vaccines should be for everyone including this 18 year old girl who just died in manchester so are you slightly disappointed at the media's one-sided coverage of this i am and uh, i sometimes scream at jeremy vine on his bbc show uh, when i'm driving uh, the radio show not the tv mm. one because he's just so pro-vax and I've certainly heard presenters shutting up um, people that are on the show when they're just giving another side, uh, our side basically. Um, and uh, my local paper did a story, I used to write a business column for them, so the Whitstable Times, they wrote a story from my tweets mm. and the mm. young journalist, that was last May 21, the young journalist mm. said, keep us informed, and they've never written anything else. So I think there's been, uh, you know, I think that these, the media have been told to be quiet. I think it must be that. They don't want to hear another side. People are dropping like flies. I've got groups of people. I get messages most days, DMs, um, I, and all of our symptoms are so similar. It's, it's like a nerve damage. Mm. Uh, you know, as you know, we've got people bedridden five, six months um, uh, as you know, Alex Mitchell, who you're interviewing later with Dan Wooten, he's had his leg amputated. It's an endless list. Mm. And even in my everyday life, if I'm having my nails done or something, the young girl there had Pfizer. 
and she hasn't had her period since last summer. She gets migraines, which she never had, right. and she's ill. She's co I've seen her just go downhill from these two Pfizer's. And I'm frustrated. I, well, I really am frustrated.